Amen. Amen. Woo. Yes. I am so excited. Oh, my gosh. The Lord has been speaking to me all month. I'm saying, I'm telling you, prepare yourself. Watch out now. God, would you play that for me? Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Had as much of you as I can take. I'm so done, so over being afraid. I've gone through the motions, I've been back and forth. I know that you're thinking you've heard this before. I don't know how to say it. So I'm just gonna say it, yeah. Fear you don't own me. There ain't no room in this story. And I ain't got time for you telling me what I'm not like. You know me. Well, guess what? I know who I am. I know I'm strong. And I am free. Got my own identity. never saw it coming something's gotta give so i give up you oh there's no room for you here yeah i've had enough the no vacancy sign on my heart is lit up in case you didn't hear sets up the environment. I mean, how many times have we heard the word faith and fear today, right? They are opposites. They don't exist in the same environment. When you're in fear, you're not in faith. Amen? And so if we just bring out that faith, if we bring out that faith walk, oh my gosh, what God can do in and through us. So I'm talking about believing Believers today. How many of you believe in believers? No, let's say that again. How many of you are believing believers? Right, because you can believe in something, but sometimes you don't actually believe in what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? So think about this. Often, like that song really ministered to me because she declared, Faith is not welcome anymore. Like it's called the breakup song. What she literally is saying is, I'm breaking up with fear. I ain't going back there anymore. Right? And so faith requires a position of faith. Like you literally have to step into it in order to activate it in your life. And in our society, we spend a lot of time going after things like entertainment, we follow stars, right? We watch TV. I mean, all of these things become something that, in theory, we're worshiping. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So God created us to worship. And when you worship, you're literally examining something. Like, you're getting to know it. You're getting to understand all the beauty and perfection that exists in it, or imperfection, Right? How many of you ever go to a concert and, you know, you start doing? <laughs> so that's God just trying to rise up. It's just that you're worshiping something else. You with me? But when we start worshiping the Lord, we start to see all of his beauty. And all of that perfection starts to change us. And all of a sudden, everything, everything that God is, just pours into you and then you know him and then you start wanting more of him and all of a sudden life changes yeah. fear will no longer grip you when you're in the presence of the Lord 
Amen. How many of you can testify? Right? When you're speaking the word of God, oh my gosh, he can change everything. Uh, we're going to go to Mark 11, 2024, 20, and amplify it. But let's pray. Because I believe we got to pray Amen. just to make it today. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are, Lord. You're omnipresent, Father. You're worthy of all praise. We give you all the honor, Lord. Everything that we are, Lord, rests and lies in you, Lord God. And so we thank you that you would guide us, that you would give us a word, Father, right now, today, Lord God, that you would help us understand who you are, allow us to see you in a new way, Father, this day, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that you would anoint us, Lord God, with, with understanding and wisdom, let your word become rhema to us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. How many of you know, like, you got you to pray to bring it in. Amen. So, all right, so Mark 11. This is, this is a, a scripture. Is this the Amplified Version, Jay? All right. So, um, really powerful stuff, right? Like, we, we have read this scripture a million times before, but I pray today that you guys are going to see it in a different way. Amen. Amen. In the morning, when they were passing along, they noted the fig tree was withered, completely away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Master, look, the fig tree which you doomed has withered away. And Jesus replying and said to them, have faith in God constantly. So, this is the story, right? When Christ walked by the fig tree, it wasn't bearing fruit. He was hungry after a long day, and he said, cursed you. The next day, Peter walks by and says, whoa, this fig tree is really dead, like not from the top, but from the bottom all the way up. And Christ used this to help them understand what great faith actually looks like. Because he said, and Jesus replying and said to them, have faith in God constantly. So he's actually saying, look, God can do anything. And we'll see this in the scripture. Keep going, Jay. Truly, I tell you, when he say truly, he means I promise you. I'm serious. Yo, listen up. What, whoever says this, whoever says this, does that mean that it's just the religious leaders? No, it means us, like anybody that says this. Whoever says this to this mountain be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. That's simple truth, right? But it is so powerfully true in our lives today. And the problem that we have is that we're pursuing something other than worshiping God. And so our doubt, the fear that comes into our lives tend to keep us away from this powerful scripture, from this powerful word that the Lord gave us, a promise that's absolutely real today as it was back then when he said it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Keep going, Jay. One more. Okay, for this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. How many of you believe in something today? Amen. Amen. Trust and believe and you will get it. I said trust and believe and you will get it. Do not doubt. Trust and believe and you will get it. Amen. Amen. How many of you have ever been whitewater rafting? I'm going to do a little parable with you. No one? All right, I know my wife and my son has. <laughs> Anyone else? Wow. Canoeing, okay. All right, so look, when, when you go whitewater rafting, it's like this, um, like you're, you're literally getting in a raft. You got oars, and the goal is to get into the mainstream of the white waters, right? And people do it for the exhilaration, right? Like the excitement of kind of maneuvering through. Yeah. So when you, when you think about this, the oars of that raft are like faith, right? 
The water is literally God's flow. And what we need to do when we're, when, you know, especially if you use this as an analogy, is we've got to find a way of using our oars to get us into the flow of God's river. Amen? Amen? And, and, and what, what happens is, is we decide we're going to be moving our oars, and sometimes we don't want to get in that flow because we see some serious white waters coming up. But that's the whole point of this life. The whole point of this life is to get into that flow because God's going to move you from this destination to that one, and the way that you get there the fastest is through those tumultuous white waters. You hear what I'm saying? So we want to get in there. But many of us, all of us at different times are actually steering away from that white water, right? We're like, don't want to go in there. Or imagine going upstream, right? You ever, you ever see somebody go upstream? We see it all the time. Like if you think about what happens, like someone that has a vice, someone that is, you know, not doing the right thing according, like God gives them a simple word. And you've, you've hear, heard some folks on this altar get a word from the Lord and you're like, I agree with that word. I know that that's for that person. But then you see their life going in the opposite direction. That's like going upstream. And you're looking at them and saying, hey, cuz, what's up? We're going that way right? But that's what happens, right? We're going upstream. There are things that hold us back. And then there are some folks that might be sitting over on the sidelines, like, you know, you kind of veer off. I'm tired. I'm going to go over there. And you see this nice, calm puddle of water over there, and you kind of chill out. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about, right? Some of us are chilling out today. I know it's, it's okay. You know, it's okay to chill out every now and then. But look, you got to get back in that flow. And I'm just telling you, to bring the pain. Because the way that the Lord actually gets us to our destination is through those white waters. Bumpy ride. And you know what? When people are doing it and they want to do it, they're like, yeah, I can't wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get so excited. Like, you get to the other end of that thing, you don't even realize what you just went through. You look back and realize that you just fell over, right, this drop off. If you'd have tried it on your own, you'd have thought, there's no way I can make it. With God, anything is possible. Amen? It's like that white water is the key. Like, get in it. Identifying it. And it begins with this relationship with the Lord. Right, Because he's the one that's going to show you the flow, the direction, where you need to go. And the key is to use your faith. Get in that water. Amen? Amen. We got to get loose with it. You know, like, you know, when you first get started, like, imagine, like, even when I come up here, I get a little nervous, right? We all get a little nervous when we're about to do something that's uncomfortable for us. So I'm a quiet guy by design. But when the Lord uses me to speak, I'm not quiet. Because it's not about me anymore. It's really about who I'm speaking to. And if the Lord can use me as a vessel, I am all in. I'm all in. So I'm believing that you're going to get something out of this today. Because I'm an all in. Right? And, and so you get, to this, you get to this point where you really just have to get out of your comfort zone. Right, And so you get in this boat now. You're getting ready to get in. And the first time you're a little nervous, you don't know how to do it. But, you know, after a while, you start, you say, I got this. You get past that first one, you get loose. You get excited. You get energized by it. And you get over that first hump. And every time after that, you get more and more understanding. You get more comfortable with it. Amen. God starts to really help you understand who he is. And then you're like, bring on the rapids. 
I'm going to Denver where the, where the water runs, you know, 100 miles an hour. That's, that's what faith is, right? You don't need to climb something that's easy for you. If you can do it, then why does God need to use you to do it? He would use someone else to do it, right? So the mountains that are, exist for us exist because we are the ones that have to climb them. And everybody has a different mountain they're trying to climb today, right? Some of us are believing for something that may feel like the world's biggest issue and somebody else in this room has gone through that issue 10 times and still exists and is living through it amen it's our it's it's god can only use us to the extent that we are ready to be used and so when we got start going down that path and that river we got to look for the tumultuous waters we got to run to them amen Listen, the life in faith in Christ was not meant to be traveled without risk. We fear is usually the fear of something that's going to happen in our lives, right? But the real thing that we're worried about is is the risk associated with what we're going to lose. How could we lose if God can do anything. Right? I mean, go back to that. If you would put that up, um, 21 through maybe 22. Yeah, you got it so, so this is um, 22. It says, Jesus replying, have faith, in God constantly. The next one. And truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it'll be done for him. Go ahead, one more. I'm sorry. And so for this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident and that it will be granted for you and you'll get it. And so, you know, like, it's like this confident trust that God is going to do it, right? That he's able and he's, he's willing to do it as well. Amen. So believing believers have to conquer fears, right? Like we know that they exist and they're coming our way. There's going to be um, these trials that exist. CJ was talking about some of those, right? It's like these trials that exist in our lives are coming our way, not because we're not in faith. It's when we're in faith, when we're in the stream of God's river, that those things even come in greater proportion. When we're not in faith, why does he need to bother? So if you're going through something, get excited, right? Like, that's what faith is, is. Like, you actually get excited about those things because you realize, boy, God is really going to use me. Pastor Jeff was talking about this last week. It's like we need, the more that we get closer to God, the more excited we get about these trials that happen in our lives. Right? I mean, he did a wonderful job of breaking that down. I mean, it is an absolute reality. We got to get excited. So, it, like, if you, if you look carefully, you may be able to, to see all kinds of different things and it's happening in the faith realm. And we, we spend a lot of time going outside of faith and spending a lot of time just doing general life issues and not focusing on the things that God, God says, right? Amen. Getting that word, Amen. praying. Yeah. You know, like, the truth is, is with resources, we can do some stuff. But with prayer, there is absolutely no limit that we can do. So we spend a lot of time thinking we need these resources to get something done. And the Lord is saying, you don't need any of that stuff to get it done. I can actually do all of it if you just believe in me. Amen? And so it's, really, it's, it's important that we literally focus on the Lord. Go to Numbers 13.30.
So in Mark 11, um, Jesus is really just trying to train his disciples on how to think at a bigger level. Right? He's literally just saying, look, get, get your faith out there. Get confident and understand that the Lord is going to do something through you. But you got to call it out. You got to believe it. So Numbers 13:30. This is um, when uh, Moses sends the ten, you know, uh, spies. Right now they come back and Caleb is talking to the people. So Caleb quieted the people of Moses and said, "Let's go up at once and possess it. We are well able to conquer." And he's talking about this land, right? Go ahead. He said, but his fellow scouts said, we are not able to go. You you read that? So remember, there were 10 scouts. Two said yes. Eight said, oh, no. Were they worshiping the Lord? Right. We are not able to go up against the people of Canaan, for they are stronger than we are. How is that possible if you're yoked with Christ that anyone on this planet could be stronger than us? Amen? Go ahead. So they brought the Israelites an evil report and the land which they had scouted out saying, the land through which we went to spy out is a land that devours its inhabitants. They're scared, right? They were scared. And all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. They, there we saw the Nephilims or giants and the sons of Anak who come from the giants. And we were in our own sights. Whose sights? As grasshoppers. And so we were in theirs. Isn't it something like... Faith sees something that doesn't exist today. Fear sees who you are and who you think you are, but faith says, "Uh uh-uh, I'm bigger than that giant, right? That giant is not going to overtake me. No matter what the weapon is, God says we win. And this is a good example of what it feels like. We do it all the time, right? Right? We, we actually take what seems like an overwhelming circumstance and say, we, we are not able. We cannot do this. We're not going to overcome this waterfall. It's too big for us. And the Lord says, what? That's like nothing. <laughs> no problem, right? It's, it's the wisdom and understanding that God is asking us to get. Because when we get that wisdom, there's no fear. Nothing that he asks us to do will make us crawl back, right? And I just wonder what would have happened if they would have been all all in one accord, right? I mean, it's not that it wasn't difficult. There were some serious battles ahead. But you've got to decide that you're going to win those battles today. And then you see it. That's what faith is, right? So when you get to know him more, you get excited about the white waters of life. With each difficult trial comes confidence, more trust, and we are ready for larger obstacles. Listen to this. Our present path is our future destination. The harder the path, the greater the future. How many of you have had some hard paths you've been traveling? Look out for them people, right? The harder the path, the greater the future. The enemy don't need to go after somebody who's not doing anything in the kingdom of God. So rise up. Amen? So family, be who God says and walk this life that he called us to walk. Don't be afraid to go after these really big dreams. All of you have a dream right now. Get it in there. Get it in your mind's eye. Because what we tend to, we tend to recess it back, right? We're like, this is too big for me. And so we just kind of like keep pushing it a little bit further away. 
and we push it back. Eventually, we're, it's not even part of us. And that's when we start lying over there on that sideline, right? Just chilling. But God don't need us to chill, right? If you're chilling, you're not doing anything for the kingdom of God. Because God has a plan for every one of us. And the dreams are so big. They're so beyond anything that we could do but God. It's the only way it's going to happen. That's the design of God. Like he literally made this for us so that we can follow this really simple plan. It's in essence, we give up who we are and we pursue him and he does it. Isn't that the truth? That's, that's the essence of, of the gospel. Christ literally did it all. All we've got to do is walk out what he says. Amen? And it does require some faith. Right? He does say, be strong and very courageous. But he says, I won't leave you or forsake you. I won't abandon you. I'm going to be with you everywhere you go. And, and even for the Israelites, he says, you know, all this land is all going to be yours. He told it to them. And that was their response to it. We have to be brave hearts for God. Amen? So we're not alone. The key is stop holding on and trust. You know, like... Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Just let it go. That's what I mean, like, get jiggy with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, you know. You ever seen those, those guys with those boats, they flip over and, you know what I'm saying? It's like, they really start to examine it. They get their hands around it. They jump in. It's no longer just, oh, I'm just going downstream. It's like, no, I'm going downstream with finesse. You with me? So the Lord asked me to write this. Your world is not falling apart. It's actually falling into place. Your world is not falling apart. It's actually falling into place. When it gets hard, it's falling into place. When those trials come into your life, it's falling into place. When God is testing you to go beyond your abilities, he's falling into place. God has his eye on you, and he hasn't left you. He's not abandoned us. Amen? Look, look, just enjoy that ride. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> woo, you know, you get on the roller coaster, it's like, yeah, <laughs> just bring it, you know, bring the pain. How many of you know about pain? Bring the pain, right? It's a battle cry. It's like we're not backing down. We're not moving back. Bring the pain, right? That's what it takes. My brother Albert, he's a, he's a warrior. <laughs> When I, when I see Albert, Albert and Tammy are visiting with us. Um, Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you, you want to go in a battle, you want to go in with that brother. <laughs> and not just physically, in the spirit. <laughs> and I'm, just saying, I'm just telling you, he goes towards the pain. And I'm just saying, it's a metaphor, right? right. It's a metaphor, but, but it's very clear. 
this life, we will have trials and tribulations. If we're doing it right, then pain is coming. If you're doing it wrong, pain is coming. Bring the pain, right? Because, you know, you might as well enjoy it. Where's your joy when the pain is happening? Right? Because we, we shrink back. we like, oh, man, I can't do this. <laughs> it don't matter what it is. Often we feel like something is so bad for us, we just got to tell somebody. Right? And so you want to you deliver it, and you want to kind of have somebody come alongside you and understand what it is. They're going through something too. Often a lot worse than yours. Every one of us are going through something. You know why? Because we're all believing believers. The only way that God uses us is through that. And through that is in faith. You with me? So if we shrink back and we just want to tell somebody, how do we ever get through it? Bring the pain. Just, just dig into it, man. Just start oaring. You know what I'm saying. If you lose your oar, just use your hands. You fall over the boat, just start swimming. Get the floating. I'm just saying. It don't matter how you get there, God is going to get you there. Right? When, when, when Christ said, hey, go over to the other side, I'll meet you there. Remember the, the disciples were in that big old stern there like, how are we going to get there? You try to kill us, Lord. He said, I told you on the other side, I'm going to meet you. Right? He didn't say, I might see you over there. I'll meet you over there. Look, enjoy the ride, ask for the pain, bring the pain, and then conquer it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Conquer it. (laughs) Look, God's message to the church is life issues are always in his hands. Our issues exist for us because we are the torchbearers of our specific cause for his glory. So the stuff that you're going through, you need to go through. It's the only way you can carry the torch that he's called you to. It's the refinement that occurs within you to make you be who he wants you to be. Right? So walk in it. Count the costs, but don't play out all those what ifs that go on in our mind, right? Like that's the fear talking. You know what I'm talking about when I say what ifs? It's like, if we do that, what if we lose? If we buy that house, we won't have enough money to eat. But the Lord says, the birds of a field, I took care of those guys. Why wouldn't I take care of you? If God told you to do it, Amen? We have to trust God to the next level. Caleb was willing to do it. I bet you he would have went out on his own if if Moses would have said, go ahead. You hear me? He would have gone, he would have taken his own troop, his own tribe and gone after if Moses would have said, go ahead, Caleb, you do it. These other guys don't know what they're doing. Go ahead, you handle this. And he would have did it. In Jesus' name. 
So we may think that it's frustrating what we have to put up with, either from this person or in job or wherever's going on, but God really isn't changing them. He's actually waiting for us to change. So the people and the thing that's your linchpin is actually changing you. Amen? So it's like learning to embrace it, learning to embrace where you are, and even in the middle of the storm. Like in the, in the storm, there's a position of faith. In the word, we stand. In the storm, as a position of faith, we stand. In the storm, in a position of faith, we stand strong. Amen? We don't back down. In faith, we keep at this thing. The Lord says that he is the prince of peace. Even in the midst of the storm, he is with us. He will calm your storm. It can be raging all around you. And people in fear running around over there, going backwards upstream, and you are going straight in. Amen. Amen. Going in. Amen. Amen. You guys feeling that? So why doesn't God answer our prayers? Because he's answering the one before that. He told you what you were supposed to do. And he needs to get you to a place where he can resolve that other. You with me? And so you think this is what I really need, but God says, oh, no, you're going here. If I give you this, you're going to sit over on the sidelines. Right? So I don't want you on the sidelines. Seems like it's good, but that ain't what I have for you. Amen? It's way bigger, way bigger. Thank you, Lord, for not answering that prayer. <laughs> you know, when a door closes, yes. it's a different feeling, right? You know, as believers, we have that right. When something doesn't work out, actually, it's for our best. And so we just keep going in faith. We hit that rock, boat turns over, get back on. Keep smiling. God has you. Amen? Amen. So look, stop, stop fighting against anything you don't like. What is best often requires a test. What is best often requires a test of faith. Like, delays are actually okay. So you really think about it. Setbacks are really this, is, is a setup for us as believers. Right? The more struggle that we get, the stronger we are. The more that God can use us. No regrets. If you're a believing believer, it's like, come on. You with me? Look. We have to make God, make room in our lives for God to move. <clears throat> Gospel faith is absolutely persistent. It doesn't relent because God never changes, right? He's the same as he was yesterday as he was today. He knows the beginning from the end. So when he told you something 45 years ago, he's the same God. He knew what was going to happen back then, right? So nothing is different on his end. The only thing that's different for us is like the wrinkles in the water, right? So we got to make room for it. We've got to remain content and passionate that all is well regardless of the face of the circumstance. When the circumstances are large, some of these things only come out with prayer and fasting. 
right? And so we, we might just think we're just going to throw a little prayer down because it happened the last time. How many of you know that ain't how it always happens? When the children of Israel under Joshua's reign needed to take back that kingdom that those guys didn't do, every battle was fought differently. Amen? Like the true blessings of God are found in our weakness. When we're at our most weakest point is when God will show up the strongest in our lives. Brokenness actually grants access to God's greater power. You know what I'm saying? Raise your hand if you know what I'm saying. Am I getting too deep for y'all? You good? You bringing it? All right. So, you know, it's interesting, right? Because the more that you have, um, the more wealthy that you are, the less you rely, right? And really, in the U.S., we're pretty plentiful in resources, right? We're not worried about where our food is coming from or water and shelter. I mean, those things are pretty commonplace. But when you're truly broken down to the point where you're not even eating, it's an entirely different level of faith that's being demanded that's being drawn from the Lord, right? It's a position, like you're drawing it out. And those people, those folks, and I'm not saying that we don't have that, but it's a different level, right? So you see someone that's really, truly struggling, and you watch their worship, and you're like, my God. Listen, if you dig a well, right? And you go down, and you stop when that water first penetrates. It's like, yes, I found water. You ain't find water. You keep digging, and you keep digging, and you keep digging, and there'll be so much water down there, you will not be able to contain it. And you know what? The deeper you dig, the fresher it gets, the more savory it tastes, the more abundance that you receive. So dig your well's deep. Dig them deep. If you take a planter and you put a seed, like you scoop out the top dirt and you put that seed, that, that flower is going to come right out, right? But if you dig that thing all out and you put that seed all the way in the bottom, before you see that fruit of that tree come out of that ground, that thing is laid in there. No weapon formed against it will move it. The winds are blow all against it. It ain't going nowhere. And faith, immovable, unbreakable. That's you. That's us. That's the believing believer. Amen? Embrace the pace of God's grace. He is on it. He's amazing. If we plant those roots deep, the faith roots deep, no weapon, there's nothing that will stop us. Amen? Amen. The things and the circumstances that we experience in life will absolutely have no, they won't impact us. They'll bounce off of us like Superman. You know, when they shoot at him, it's like, <laughs> like, I remember that one movie, he got shot in the eyes, like, and I know, like a bullet literally came and hit him in the eye and it just fell off. His eye didn't even, I was thinking, you know what? <laughs> in faith, you could do that. You with me? In faith, he can do it. Now don't, don't go get shot now. I'm just saying, <laughs> watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> it will hurt. <laughs> if you could pull up Jeremiah 17, 8. 
building foundations go deep underground. When it, when it surfaces, it's going to tower up in the sky. You see those big buildings that kind of, you know, you see them come out of the ground, and you think, wow, that's huge. But if you saw what they did before it came out of the ground, you would understand the amount of time and energy where nobody's looking at what's happening, the amount of dedication, the amount of preparation that it takes for you to get to that level of faith and understanding. It ain't easy. But the true joy comes from that, from digging, from going deep into the ground and understanding who God is in your life. When you have that understanding, there's no limit to how high and what will tower from who you are and how God will use you, the impact that he will make on you and the lives that are influenced by all that God called you to. Amen? Amen. The height of what we become in faith is independent of who we are. It's who God is. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 17, 8. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river, and it shall not see, and what? And shall not see in fear when the heat comes, but its leaf shall be green. It shall not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought nor shall it cease yielding fruit. Isn't that powerful? I want to be planted by the river. Amen? Because that's what the Lord is saying. Look, if you dig into this planting, if you understand that if you plant yourself here with me, your leaves will never wither. They'll always be fresh and green. When people look at you, it's like, wow, what are you doing? It's like, I'm just praying a lot. I'm just spending a lot of time with my Lord, and it gives me joy. I get excited, right? It's like I have no fear. Nothing that anything or someone can do against me will prosper if I'm in this position. You with me? So, you know, the, the height of what we come, look, look, it's just there's no limit to it. And, you know, often we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how we're going to spend our life. But really, the next level thinking is, is what we're going to do for him. Amen? Like what we're going to do from his perspective. And when he, when he does that, he will not only influence you, but he'll influence the next generation using you. Amen. You with me? So, you know, you know um, my son is a runner. I used to run a little bit in college. And, you know, Back in the day, nobody could run a four-minute mile, right? And this one guy just worked and worked and worked until he actually did it. So he had this belief that he was going to do it. 30 days after he did it, 30 people did it. Right? And so our, what happens is, is we have a requirement to take our family to this new level of faith. And when we rise up, when we step up our game in faith, then our children will see that as a baseline to their faith. The things that we wind up having, the things that we see, the, the, the areas that God took us through, those, those valleys and hills that our children were in the back with us when we were going, they've experienced them already. They're not afraid of them anymore. Right? We have a responsibility to grow. If we don't grow, they don't grow. And everyone around us doesn't grow. We're all encouraged by seeing someone rise to a new level of faith. Amen? And rise with them. Amen? God gives us all visions. And all of our visions are united in some way. And when you hear somebody expressing their vision and you just, God has spoken to you and your vision just falls either alongside of it, above it, below it, but there is unity in the kingdom of God. Amen? If we were all pursuing it, there would be no ground that wouldn't be touched by the gospel of the Lord. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. Fear holds us back. So here's what I would say to you. Mediocrity is finished. In faith, there's no room for mediocrity. Amen? Press into it. Am I talking too long? Is, is this, are you guys still getting something out of this? Because I got seven minutes. So, um, listen, so I'm going to, hold on. I got a couple of things that are really powerful, I got to say. But think about this. You hire a plumber. The plumber walks into your house. He does his work. After he's done, you guys are sitting in the living room. He goes into your kitchen, opens your refrigerator, takes a bottle of water out, starts drinking it, and then sits down and watches TV with you. How many, isn't that pretty uncomfortable? Like, he is not approved to do that. But when your child walks into your house, they can have anything they want, right? That's the kingdom of God. That's how God views us as his heirs, right? So when we go to draw upon him, we're thinking we're not entitled. We're not approved to do it. But the Lord says, I'll give you anything you want. You're my son. You're my daughter. I want you to have it all, right? And we don't think about it as children, right? For our parents, we just go in there and grab it. That's the nature of knowing who your parent is. When you know who he is, there's no limit to what you would ask for. There's nothing that's not available to us as inheritance because we're grafted into the kingdom. Amen? It's really important that we understand that because Fear can also grip that, right? Like, I'm not going to ask God for that because, you know, that's too, too small. That's not, right, that's not why. But the Lord don't know. You with me? We got to dig into that. Think better and live better. Take limits off of our life and for the next generation. So if you would pull up Isaiah 43, 19 through 21. You know, whenever I'm feeling down in the dumps, I read this scripture. Um, because God reminds me that he's going to do a new thing in my life. It's like, it just, it just you know, like he's, he's making, you know, rivers in desert places. What seems like it's impossible, it's not impossible for the Lord. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it and know it? And will you not give heed to it? God is doing this thing. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Go ahead, Jack. The beasts of the field honor me, the jackals of, and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give to give drink to my people, my chosen. Like that's, that's the word of God. Because when we're in the middle of that desert place, we feel like, what, what's going to happen? The Lord says, I'm going to make a stream there. Don't worry about it. I got you. Right? Go to Luke 5, 4 through 6. So I... I found this really interesting. Jesus told Peter after he was preaching, he said, go in your boat now and let your nets down. And Peter had already been, you know, fishing all night. And he's like, oh, let my net down. But listen to the scripture. It says, when he had stopped speaking, he sent Simon, Peter, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a haul. Go ahead, Jay. And Simon Peter answered, Master, we toiled all night exhaustingly and caught nothing in our nets. But on the grounds of your word, I will lower the nets again. 
And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were at the point of breaking. The, the, the issue of where we are and whether or not we wanted to, because he started by saying, oh, I'm not going to do it. But when he actually poured it out, there is no containing what the Lord would do for him. Amen? Amen. Really interesting. If you look at the King James Version, if you look at the King James Version of this, it actually says that the Lord told him to lower his nets. And Peter actually said, I'm going to lower my net. Not in the plural, the singular. And so at the end of the day, sometimes what happens in our lives, the Lord tells us to do this great big thing, and you wind up doing the smaller thing. But I wonder what would happen if he'd have lowered the full net. You know what I'm saying? What would happen to our generations if we lowered the full net? If we if we dropped it all. We went for broke. We gave up all fears. Just jump in there. What would happen in the kingdom of God if we didn't hold back? Like, take that leap of faith. Take the leap of faith. Many of us want to know what God wants or what he wants us to do, but what God actually wants is for us to know him. Like, if you start there, all those other answers will be revealed through faith. Every single bit of it. Give room for God to show off. Um, if you could go to Ezekiel 37.1, this will be my last scripture. So Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10 in the Amplified. Amen. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you, but, but I'll explain it. So this is Ezekiel, right? He's, he's in the spirit. And the Lord is expressing to him, I want you to go to the valley where all these dry bones are laid. And he's going to do something supernatural. And he's going to allow him to see it. So the hand of the Lord is upon me. And he brought me out into the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Next. And he caused me to pass round about among them. And behold, there were very many, many human bones in the open valley or plains. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I ask you, can these bones live? Can God use you? And I answered, oh, Lord, you know. Isn't that powerful? Keep going. And he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Keep going. Thus says the Lord, God, to these bones, behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter, and you, and you shall live. Keep going. And I will, I will lay sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin, and I will put breath and spirit in you, and you, dry bones, shall live, and you shall know, understand, and realize that I am the Lord, sovereign ruler, who calls the fourth loyalty and obedience of service. Amen? Amen. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. So why don't you guys do me a favor? Just close your eyes. Close your eyes and, and, and digest all that the word has said, all that the Lord has said unto us. And I prophesy, Father, that, that these, your people, may go through fire and not be burned. That they would be in a situation and that it would be temporary, Father God. That they won't be dis- distracted, Father God, by its design, Lord God. I prophesy that they would settle in the midst of the situation at peace, Lord God. That they wouldn't be stuck in the valley, but that God, 
would promise that they would go to that mountainside, that they would have mountaintop victories, Lord God, that they walk by faith and not by sight, that they choose joy, Lord God, that behind the scenes, Lord, that God is working out great finishes for their dreams, that he's working out their plans for life, Lord God, that he would pull on a full armor, Lord, and see all that you have for them, Lord God. That you've delivered them, Lord, from trials, Lord. That it's in existence today, Father God. They will be gone, evaporated in the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you for the deliverance, Lord God. That it's scheduled and it's already on its way, Lord God. That they would be encouraged, Lord God. That even in the trials, victory is on the way, Lord God. That no storms will keep them from the destiny of the Lord. That they won't be moved by wind, Lord God. They won't be moved by rain or thunder, Father God. That they would be calm, Lord. That they could handle all things, all things through Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for moving our spiritual muscles today, Lord God. That we're no longer discouraged by the process of life. But that we believe, Father, in you there's joy. In you, there's overwhelming peace. In you, there's life eternal. In you, Father God, all things, all things rest. Father. So we worship you today. Lord. We exalt you. We give you all the honor, all the praise, all the glory be unto you, Father. For you do it all. That You know the beginning from the end, Lord God. You're the Alpha and the Omega of our lives, Father God. No weapon formed against the temple of your people shall prosper, Father God. Their lives are hidden and sold in Christ Jesus, Father God. So we give you all the honor, all the glory. So keep your eyes closed. Listen, the Lord literally took our sin balance and he just paid it off with the blood of his sacrifice. Can you imagine that? I owe a lot. I did a lot. I have all these sins that are mounting up against me and I don't have any way to get them all done. The Lord went to the cross for that very reason. He actually shed his blood so that that sin balance would be completely extinguished, not recognizable anymore. And so that we can live free in communion with our Father, that we can worship him and understand who he is freely without the hindrance. And so if you don't know that Jesus that I just want you to lift your hands in the air right now because you have to actually make that choice like faith is a decision if you don't make the decision then you will be in fear but if you make that choice faith will get you closer worship will get you closer prayer will get you closer but understanding who Christ is and what he's done will change your life. So I see your hands. Everybody, just, just repeat this simple prayer. That's all it takes, right, to really get into the kingdom of God. You just have to confess and believe that Jesus is Lord, and he'll do it for us. And so, Father, Thank you for saving me, for giving me a new covenant, a covenant sealed with your blood, full of glory and hope and expectation. I believe in you, Jesus, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus said that prayer. Just come on up and talk to one of the pastors afterwards. The Lord is just doing a wonderful thing in and our lives, and he has great plans for us. Amen. Amen.
Yeah, come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. How many, how many believe that that word was so on time? Amen. So on time. Can we lift our hands in God's presence? Father, just saturate us, Lord, in that word. Let us go home. Let it penetrate our heart. Let us use it. Let us remember, let us remember, Father, that you are fighting for us, Daddy God, and you're on our side, God. Daddy God, we walk in faith and not by sight. We walk in faith and not by sight. If you believe that, I just want you to give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, shout in faith. Shout in faith. Amen. We are going to dismiss. If you want prayer, you're more than welcome to come up here. Um, we have a pastoral team that would love to pray for you. But we are selling food. If you want to help support, um, you can purchase food. Also, if you want to purchase a women's ticket, you can do that in the back as well or a t-shirt. We love you. See you all next Sunday. Have a blessed week. You are blessed. God bless you.